Hello everyone, welcome back to the shop. Let's dive into our next piece, the taproom chandeliers. Let's start from the top. Okay, so Paso Robles Brewing, a brand new brewery here in Paso Robles, contacted me about some chandeliers, some lighting, and they wanted them big. So the brewery's brand new to Paso Robles. I'm really excited because they're gonna put emphasis on food and like really good brew. It, it just so turns out they're really awesome to work with. The whole team they've thrown together is top notch. Okay, so it was up to me to come up with a good design and my criteria was turn of the century, Railroad, high Victorian fashion and, and indulgences. It's kind of a tall order if you ask me. So I started at the drafting board. Now, high Victorian finery and railroad don't really go together very often, but then I got, I did some digging. I, I looked at old photos, I did some research, and you know, I, I, I think I caught on to something. There's something about the scroll work that I chose to forge, the oil lamps, and the, the very geometric shapes all tied together the old way. I think I, was, I caught on to something. Now, designing something really massive usually weighs a lot. And Beams can't hold everything, and no one really wants to be underneath a chandelier that's gonna come down. So we got an engineer on the site, and with what he observed, he signed off on 500 pounds. I had 500 pounds of, of weight to make these things look massive. So 500 pounds, as, as far as steel goes, is not much. I couldn't go too thin with the flat stock that I was going to utilize. I, it needed to be structurally rigid to kind of create the shape and not be too wavy, but to also be light enough to not cave the roof in. So I found that that eighth inch flat stock was going to be perfect. That strip was going to be absolutely perfect for what I needed to do, and it should come out underweight. So the railroad you know, deals with massive steel, steel that has been binded together by rivets and just because it has to flex, welds will eventually break, and back then they weren't even welding back then, so everything had to be riveted together and just big chunky iron that looks like it weighs a thousand, you know, thousands of pounds. Now, originally I designed the chandelier to be an octagon, but to have square, meaning 90 degree walls to it. 
and it just, it became stale. I remember I approached the client and they're so amazing with working with me creatively. They were incredibly uh, accommodating. So what I did was I pitched the walls out several degrees, which makes angles go crazy in this thing. I'm so happy that I rolled those out because when you're sitting underneath these chandeliers, you're gonna be primarily up underneath them and you need to see more chandelier than just the bottom. You need to be able to see the walls as well. Making the steel look heavy, that was my first thought about design. So they, to make them heavy, they need to be big and robust. So rather than a bunch of negative space and just kind of clean air going through these chandeliers, I made them solid. I designed them to just look like they were repurposed from some locomotive somewhere in some place in time. Thank you so much for coming on to this journey with me. There's so much more to come as we build these taproom chandeliers. And as always, my friends, thank you for watching. <laughs>